come for a drink. <laughs> Um, can I start with taking, uh, by taking apologies? And I have one from Calvin Shoebridge. Um, and I need an apology for Joe. Oh, Joe One of the challenges around this um, target is it's actually an annual target, but we do report on a quarterly basis, so there's always a time lag. And we've noticed that there's a real trend whereby the activity really seems to ramp up after the um, Christmas period, because it's very much linked to people's New Year resolutions around giving them smoking or just taking better, better care of themselves. But another key piece of work that I think will make a difference is that next week, we're going to be issuing to GP practices 
data that shows their, their performance in comparison to, to other practices. And if there's something that GPs like to see, it's how they're performing against other practices, and what they don't like to see is that if they're at the bottom of the pile. So we are we are pretty confident that that, day, that exercise is actually going to be looked even further. I'm pretty confident that we will meet the target by the end of um, the 31st of March this year. to show people uh, what to encourage people to come along but I think a major issue is it's healthy people being asked to come for a check that might then change their lifestyles quite fundamentally. Yeah. The age group is um, it's 40 I'm sure it's, it's 40 plus 40 to 74. Is it is it any GPs as the provider for health checks or use any other providers? We don't at the moment, we, we commission through general practice at the moment. So we can't commission through other other healthcare providers? No, we can, yes. When when the contract comes up for renewal, we'll certainly look at other options. Yes, just as a follow-up, why don't you look at a, a variety of different providers yeah. that are just in GP surgery? We will do, okay. we'll do when the contract comes up for renewal. Oh, Julie is indicating when the tendering process goes, there'll be another attendant. This is a five-year yeah. programme, we're into year two. Um, okay, I've got Nita and then Steve and Mike. Yeah. Nita, Steve, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask the question about whether um, there are certain wards more affected by people not going along than others. Well, I think you can probably, yes, you can probably tell what my answer is going to be that we do have a lower uptake in our more deprived wards. So that's, you know, we do need to keep them. Um, really emphasising the action that we have it in those wards. And that's about working with the GPs as well, about how we can get the GPs to be very proactive in pulling people into the practice. Is there an additional drive that we can do? Um, you know, simply a letter drop or something, um, rather than just go through the GP? Uh, yeah, and that's the promotion, that's the promotion uh, information that we're going to do. So we're going to do uh, a video and uh, we're also going to do posters which can go into GP practices but also into other community settings. <coughs> so if you've got any ideas about those community settings, particularly in our wards on the east of the borough, that would be really helpful to know. Steve. Thank you, Chef. Um, I don't know if you're aware, <coughs> but, uh, like the one I'm asked, they don't send the letter. <coughs> they just expect you, I think that they say the health checks you on your birthday. Okay. But if you forget, you just your um, and then you go sort of next April or May for something different, and then you sort of just shout at them for, uh, for not, not not going. But I would have suggested that all the whole, whole surgery should actually send a notification out. Just expect the patient to know. Yeah. Okay, I shall take that back. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Actual results where people have actually been there, that's something 
um, checked rather than just for sending a letter out. So it's a stage payment. It, it, it is a two stage oh. payment because there's the offer and then the take up. So they get payment for when they should be sending the letter yeah. out and then they get a payment for when the person comes in and has their check up. So I have a look at the, the offer and whether or not why letters aren't being sent out. But it is two stage payment. Thank you, Thank you. Are we happy to move on? Are you going to let us know what it is to each individual, for each individual item? Like the letter going out, how much do you see? And how much for the actual check? I'll let you have that for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Can I, sorry, yeah. can I just make one final point? Uh, um, our PPG uh, asked uh, the senior partner um, about uh, how many people they had uh, to come to them, and it, it was quite, quite good. Um, but um, he made the point that you talked about healthy people going. He said a hell of a lot of them were not healthy at all and should have come to see a doctor a long, long time ago. Just Thank you very much. Major, major, major highlights of revenue. That's okay. 
and um, in terms of cash report. Uh, you want to take questions on that one? Can I take a look? Yeah. Peter, I'm sorry, can you explain 3.2.1 and 3.2.1? Page 87, 3.2, I don't understand exactly what 1 and 2 mean. I, I, I take part of the meaning, but can you tell me just in very simple words, what does that mean? Okay, Our social services are predicting uh, achievements, roughly achievements that you can do spend in the year. Of that, 2.4 million is due to savings not being implemented. So they've got a series of, of savings targets to meet. And they're behind those savings targets, so therefore they're going to spend by 2.4 million on those savings targets. That, that, <coughs> that explains 2.4 million of the 2.8 million they've spent. 2.4 million of the 2.8 million? Yeah. yeah. That's the 2.7 seven. Seven, nine, it's 2.8, sorry, okay. 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 And the other one defines the pound then is due to demand pressures. So that's caseloads increasing above expectation. And that's adding more pressures to the budget. So we're paying more for care, for care cases, or cut care costs, due to increase the case loads. And that, that makes it a cheaper table. So what's the reconcil what's it mean about the reconciliation between the old and the new system though? The during the year a new social services uh, came out of systems come into place and we reconciled records and ills to the new system to ensure that we match and looking at the liabilities that come forward from that. So, looking at case numbers, how many people are on the system, how long that care is going to be in place for, and then deciding that those figures to be put forward. Okay, right. Um, um, 2.2, second one. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Figure 2, so you're just saying that, that one of the same in the year was for sales and base services. Now, that, that sales and base services in the year was £750,000, but the forecast now is that the actual sale in the year will, will be £370,000. So that savings slipped, so there's a shortfall there of around £380,000, which will occur in 2016, but there's a, there's a delay basically, which is causing problems. So in 1516, they'll make any savings that need to be made plus the savings they haven't made? They'll make the 750, yes, they'll make the full 750 as far as what we've been told. But there's a delay, they should have made 750 this year, but it won't be made this year in 1415. It says here 1415. It doesn't say anything about 1516 under the seven. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not going to save in 1516. So the same thing takes place in 1415, and then it's continuous for future years. Okay. Wendy. Thank you. So there are slippages. There are savings that aren't managing to be delivered during the year. <coughs> are you aware how confident um, people are that they're going to manage? Well, that's something we have to manage as part of the process. I mean, there's actions in place for people to make their savings. There's action actions in place. And if we can't get savings, they need to declare just that they can't make the savings for future years. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a risk, of course. You know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big target for next year, but you know, it's 38 million pounds for 15, 16 in terms of savings. Plus, this year's savings, you say, which are outstanding. Yeah. So, so like on page 88, it's speaking mm -hmm. about. Um, yeah. Residential care placements for young people, yeah. and those are the sort of things that we can't afford not to do, aren't they? Yeah. I just wanted to express concern. Sure. You, we've got, we've got one more meeting before the end of the municipal year. Would you like me to request that some of the children and people would particularly address that point? Because I think it might be easier to address in that way. Right. Right. Could we have some different angles as well, please? Because I, I tend not very happy with those two. Okay. Can we ask about somebody from the public?
try and get the members of the executive strategy group before us one day in the next municipal year to explain what they actually do at their meetings. That might be a good idea, and it might be something that when we, when those who are on this committee come together after the election, that we've got a new committee together, they might want to look at putting on their work programme for the following year. But I don't particularly want to set a work programme for next year uh, today. Right. The, the suggestion could be raised. Well, we did have spokes, if you actually don't know, it, we did have spokespersons meeting at the beginning of the this municipal year to set the work programme for the year, to which you ever been. Could I ask, I think probably there isn't an answer, why periods seven and eight have a little asterisk about them? Yeah, sorry. We actually changed the dates of those of the of the how we should take those out. So I think I think when the tenants timetable was first set, they go to later 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 cabinets, we're going to move forward. So that's the reason, sorry, yeah. We should be removed those. Thanks for watching. Um Scott Michael, would you would you make a note of that? Specifically yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike, did you want to ask Yes, I did. Thank you, Chair. Um, item 3, three 4 refers to libraries. Um, I am aware that there have been some preliminary discussions uh, with friends groups about the operation of libraries, particularly, uh, particularly the, uh, the smaller libraries. But uh, I'm not quite sure how it talks about introducing loan working with support from volunteers. Uh, and I said this is only very preliminary at this stage. Don't you think you were rather jumping the gun with this one? The same, the same for group three, four is, is, is the same as we for the 14, 15 match of the year. Right. Uh, so there's also obviously another set of proposals, 15, 15, 15, 16. So that particular paragraph. It is around 14, 15, the same as that's the uh, so Can you tell me what an agile worker is? That's good. Well, an agile worker. We hold an agile council. An agile worker would be like, we're working more than one library, we're moving side to side. Right. <laughs> 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 that's ridiculous. Right. 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 developed um, in order to make the saving was predicted on that one, and also the youth and play. 
So I think it was a useful exercise from a family and well-being perspective. However, it did disrupt the work programme quite significantly, given the, um, this very busy committee. Um, it did certainly disrupt one piece of uh, panel work that we undertake in the same part of the review. Um, and, and I wouldn't say completely derailed it, but it did, it did uh, I think the, the, we possibly look at doing things slightly better in the programme over the next year. But I'm interested to hear from the other committee. So if we could take Janelle and then Mike, and then anybody else who has some input, and we can make notes and use it for um, future, future council. Thanks, uh, Chair. Yeah, um, we only took two pieces of scrutiny. Um, they were looking at the um, due supply route uh, opening times and the removal of the early 70s council tax discount. Um, I, was, I thought that both pieces were really, really useful. They were um, all, all members that participated with. Uh, Contributed to a really good opportunity. Um, what was looked at the proposed hours that could, with the library's option were originally um, a lot less than task and finish people were happy with, and we didn't think that they were trying to encounter children going to libraries after school using the computers. And I feel that that was listened to when the um, report went to cabinets. And um, we sort of we, we thought that there should be a <coughs> consultation with. Use groups with um, library staff, with the users, in conjunction with looking at the um, portfolio. And, um, and I think that that was listened to, so I was really, really pleased. And with the um, council tax discount rate of 70s, that, that was more, the um, majority of them agreed that it was really one of the last councils in the country to explore the extended distance council, so it was more a case of having to mitigate against um, to people that might call it a but, but in general, I, I was really, really Thanks, Chair. Um, I think it's been really beneficial what we've done this year in coordinating between the different committees and the regeneration and environment. I thought Steve's going to um, say something. I think it's worked really well, um, and we've done some excellent task and things this year. <coughs> and what we've looked at, and we've made good recommendations to Cabinet, and it's, in my opinion, it's worked very well. Anybody want to make a comment? Anybody who's sat on the car? Apparently so. He was inviting you more than all. Yeah, I mean, the car park one was a hard one, and it took a long time, but um, it was actually making the right results in the end. And I think it showed us, um, what forward on that one, that it, it showed us that the, how much there is to think about it, you know, people just think, oh, just stick the, the prices up here and down here. There's a lot more to it than that uh, different areas. The apprentice one, that one, that's one of the easiest. The, the main concern is, is getting members to, to sit on these committees because everyone's so busy at the moment. Um, we've got, there's a lot of ideas in the park, particularly on the regeneration for next year already. And I don't know whether we're looking for people to do that. And of course we don't want the same but members really sitting on them, which stands out. What would you do with two cards, then? Wait, wait, wait. Put the extra money would come in that way. Does anybody else want to make a point? Tom and Wendy, you can keep Tom and Wendy, Paul. Thank you, Chair. Just on the confirmation, so I think on the picture, it's a good piece of work. Unfortunately, it's not done on the book, very valuable. Uh, we were making, we were scrutinising the decision pre council, so if you go to what's the goal of the council decision? It might be actually a good idea to then do a review of how we implement it um, and the best way of mitigation for those. So that would be my suggestion in the future because, as you can understand, we're going to do the screen out of the passages and that's fine and it can be valuable. But I think the value would be more afterwards. So that's what I'm Thank you. I'm looking to my business group and down desperately what we've decided. Thank you. Thank you.
right, you can go and do a lot of, a lot of good work, but then at the end of the day, the cabinet has decided to do something else, and you might want to examine the impact of two things after. As well. I think that's something I'd like to discuss when we get to the work programme element of the, the agenda tonight, and how we can move more in, into a position of doing more pre decision scrutiny, because we, we've aspired to that all the years, we haven't really got to that position yet. But the same point you just made about, about members being working very hard, I'm one of them. Okay, Paul. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just coming back to the car parking, actually, car parking scrutiny was something we actually started last year and followed through with this year. That's right. Um, yeah. And so it, that, that was, uh, to me, that, that was excellent because it gave you a real understanding of, of the whole process and how it followed through. And one thing that was very evident to me was how much information you could, you could individually glean from it. I mean, I, learned a tremendous amount about the car park and likewise with the libraries, all the information the officers put together. So just as an educational, informative process, it was really valuable. Uh, and, and I was very encouraged and I said so to the cabinet member in the hall uh, with the car park in that you know our comments and recommendations were taken on board. Uh, and, and particularly actually when I remember when Andrew uh, presented a petition to you know um, people from uh, as well as the concern about the impact on the shops and the, and the retail uh, area. So a lot of those views were taken on board and uh, I actually met with Steve, got his surname now, who deals with the car park, and, and he'd already had some positive feedback. So I think, I, I think it's shown to be uh, a positive tool in, in uh, gleaning information uh, and also uh, allowing the electorate to know that we, we are considering these points. We do take on board their points. We, you know, we listen to and take on board um, the concerns of residents across the borough. Um, but one thing, we did make some recommendations that we get feedback from a couple of pilot schemes, particularly on the car parking. So I look forward to, to some of that feedback in the future uh, and uh, as, a, as an ongoing uh, scrutiny process. And uh, likewise, uh, with the libraries as well, actually, we asked for some comments and feedback as to how we work with the groups and representatives and encouraging you know those libraries that don't have friends at the moment and so I, I think we've kind of done a good job we've enjoyed i personally enjoyed being involved with that with this follow-up and so i think so like just a car parking it could be an ongoing thing in the libraries just to get that feedback and follow-up so it's positive Thank you. <coughs> Tremendous amount. I think the work that was done, particularly on the car park and the libraries, and we, we tried our best um, to look at these things with using science rather than just sticking a finger in the air and seeing which way the wind's blowing. And I think now we can see the benefit. And I know from the committee that I chaired for the last 12 months, we've managed, I think, most of the time to take out the party politics. And it's really helped, I think, most of the time, Steve. Um, and, it, and it has really helped, I feel, for all of us, I think, um, I hope, anyway. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Um, Phil, and then Jerry. I think from the beginning, the process was the result of things that needed looking at in September. Part of that, I think, stems from was looking at option papers which are, which are full summaries of key issues as a written sort of document taken into account. But there were often additional papers to those option papers that you could follow up in the consultation documents. However, for elected members, I think it would be better if from the outset when option papers are prepared, the officers take some soundings about what would you want in an additional option paper, because it felt as though we would keep having to go back to officers and say, we want to know a bit more about that, we want to know a bit more about that. And once we'd be overwhelmed with the full weight of information that they want to produce, it is a case for sitting down and looking at the options to see earlier on what we want to get into detail of. Yeah, thanks for that. It's just from the point of view again of the uh, economic, uh, economic generation. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I, I'd very much like to see tourism put much more into the uh, committee uh, radar than it has been before. It's been slightly between... We're talking about future council, Terry. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm talking about the next year. Um, yeah, um, it's I like that in this last year or so, it's tends to have between different committees, and I very much if there's one committee tourism needs to be allied to, it's economic regeneration, and we're very much glad to see that. Yeah, 
fascinating resource is where, where the book in, in, put into context you just gave with regards to where, where I think we've got a manageable one. I do also think we've got um, our member participation for Minister Step Up and Duke is where we can be like, um, virtually have an online committee has all been involved in a piece of screening uh, task and finish which, which is great as well. And um, we did start the year off by um, we did start to set up task and finish work on the welfare assistance scheme. That was suspended. Um, since then there's been two two pieces of work we, we mentioned which was on the company's libraries and on Oak Council tax discount. Um, we now we fortunately enough to resume the local welfare assistance scheme street, task and finish screening panel because we have had a development where the funding was in place with some additional funding and we will be looking at how that can be best used given the government will be cutting this funding off after this year and there will be no money there for people in the most dire of need to be able to apply for. So it's going to be a really big important, I think, and really, really exciting and interesting piece of work. We've got the original panel um, back on board with a few extra um, and we've got our scoping meeting on Wednesday. So I, I'm really looking forward to this. I think this will be useful. And um, I, I'm pleased. And I agree with you about being keen about doing more pre decision work, but I think my committee is, is taking on real well, life. Uh, we're doing okay, we'll work with them. Thank Thanks. Thanks, uh, Chair. Yes, I, I concur with everything you said. You talked about predetermination, more work on predetermining this time last year. But what I've been aware of this year is time constraints. And I felt with our committee there was much more we could have looked at, but with the time constraints, it's very, very difficult. Um, that's what I felt this year. I think the process is evolving, and the more we can get predetermination, we can, we can be in there from the very start. Pre-decision, I think. Pre-decision. Um, but I can't see how we can achieve it. I really can't, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Phil. Yeah. Yes, I think come back to what, you know, what is the definition of pre-decision scrutiny in the sense that, um, I'll try and put it in my statement's terms, some of the key officers have an idea that something could be done differently, might go out to a mutual, might work in a different way. Often the things that have been looked at, like day services, require detailed consultation with the people attending the centres, um, service users, whatever on to rest description, but there are always work that needs to be done that has to be started at the right time so that the thing is going <coughs> to be completed in time. And those that are most sensitive often require at least 12 weeks consultation. So if there's an opportunity for uh, whoever's in the cabinet, uh, once they get their feet under the table in June, to say with the chief officers, well, this is, we need to look at this, and we need to start working on this early, then, then we need to um, speak to to be involved in the, I mentioned the back of the book, the things in September, we need to be afraid of which of things to do so with in late June and early July.
Um, now, I, at this point, I should move um, the exclusion of the press and public. <coughs> since there is no... Um, no, 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 no